you're probably gonna hear extra noise because um, there's people moving out above me and like the whole apartment is shaking as well. So hopefully the video won't be too um, bumpy. But this week I finished my toy car and ginger ale painting. So this week was all about resolving it. And this whole painting process has been kind of an experiment. I've been intentionally experimenting with a lot of different things. Like when I was in school, we were encouraged to paint um, things with bigger forms in them and not do anything that is too small and intricate. And I wanted to get first-hand experience on why that is, so that's why I decided to paint the car and now I totally understand why that was uh, discouraged in school. Because with painting the car and then also the label on the ginger ale bottle, um, with having things that are so small and intricate, with if your brush stroke is off by just a tiny bit, it can make things look really deformed and not solid. And also, I was finding it hard to paint things that are small and intricate and still get this nice brushy quality that I really like in painting. It was just looking sloppy when I was trying to do that, so I would tighten it up a lot, and then you kind of get that uh, strict tight look to it which I don't really prefer but without doing that I felt like I couldn't get the objects to look solid and so then I wanted to experiment with keeping things looking nice and neat and solid but seeing if I could get the more like painterly poetry into the painting somehow so the focal point of the painting is the car and so I decided I wanted to make the car having this more attention to it like more glow and make it more luminous and um really push it and, and make sure that it's like obviously the focal part of the painting and the label of the ginger ale bottle sits behind it and all that so what i started doing was adding around the car especially up into the the bottles and the background this airy light and i was getting this by mostly scumbling, glazing though as well, and just taking different colors with my brush and either dry brushing the paint up above the car into the bottles with a lighter lighter colors um, or adding a little bit of medium to it as well. And that really helped push the attention a little bit away from the label and make sure that the it was making the car more obviously the focal point than the, the bottles. And then also I was working with the car too, the front plane of the car that's facing the viewer, I kept that as most detailed as possible. And so the farther back of the car, I would scumble and glaze over that too and kind of make it more blurred out. And so the back of the car was kind of blurred out and the bottles were blurred out with that scumbling and glazing look. And I found that from far away looking at the painting, I really liked how it looked. But then when I would walk up closer to it, it started looking sloppy again. And if you're kind of scumbling and glazing and not painting directly with paint that's wet into wet, I find that it can get this kind of like cotton-like appearance where things are definitely not looking solid. And that's how the painting was looking, which isn't good because everything in the painting I mean, the materials in the painting, metal, wood, and glass, are all really solid, and it was not having that feeling to it. So I feel like it's like this balance where I want the painting to look good from far away, but also look good and interesting brush-wise and surface-wise when you get up close to it. So I needed to tighten things up again and kind of pa be painting more directly and wet into wet so I have a balance between um, an atmospheric look to it but also keeping things looking like the solid material that they are. And so I painted and changed the surface of the painting look a lot and I think my favorite brush stroke now is this really wide brush stroke that I have on the bottle in the middle of the bottle that's between the the front and back label and I like it because it's I loosened the paint up by putting medium in it, this dark green, and I just took a brush stroke and did a brush stroke going down. And it's cool because you can see also that 
airy, scumbly look underneath it, but the brushstroke on top of it is really obvious and makes the bottle look solid like glass. So I like that you get that contrast in um, paint application. Okay, and then once I felt like the painting was wrapping up, I took a picture of it and I sent it to my friend, to my friend Brett, and he's really good at giving critiques because he has a really good eye for painting and he's really honest and really brutal and just tells you what he thinks of the painting. So he sent me, he really let me have it, like sent me a list of all these things that he thought didn't make sense or could be better. So um, I wrote all those things down in a list and then I took, looked at the picture myself and um, added some things to the list as well. And I found that really helpful because having a really fresh eye that hasn't seen this painting yet at all and uh, with those fresh of eyes giving his thoughts on it um, really opened my eyes wide where things that I was seeing but wasn't quite as obvious probably because I've been staring at this thing for so much. Um, I found that really helpful. So then I went and I made corrections, all the corrections to the painting, uh, and then I would take another picture of the painting and look on it on my tiny phone, because um, it's kind of compressing things in different ways, uh, so I can see the painting in a new way, and I make a list and make the corrections then, and then I would take the painting outside in daylight and look at the painting close and far away, see the adjustments I want to make, write them down. I would take it inside under artificial light and really study the painting from close and far away, write a list of adjustments I want to do, and then um, I do those adjustments. And I just kept doing that until I felt like there wasn't anything else I could do and I'm happy with the painting. And so um, I finished this painting at the end of this week. And so I've been documenting the whole process of this painting on my Patreon account. So if you want to watch the full process of me painting it, you can go on to follow the link for my Patreon. It's in the description box down below. And I'm glad that I finished this painting too because I've had my studio set up one way since I moved into my new apartment and it's not as efficient as I think it could be. So now that this painting's done, I can take the setup down. I'm going to move my whole studio around and try something different. I think um, for fun I'm going to do some quick pencil sketches too and I might take a bit of a break from the studio and maybe go uh, on some hiking trails possibly and draw outside just for fun. We'll see.